No God's way for the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Okay, y'all. Uh, Holy Spirit, have you in this place? So, last night into the morning, um, I started reading in Revelations. I know. If you don't know, you finna know. No matter how many times you read a certain book in the Bible, a certain scripture, a certain verse in the Bible, right? You get a different meaning every time. Not even just different meaning, but new understanding, right? So I found myself reading about the the book sealed with the seven seals. And that starts in chapter five and chapter seven and the beginning of chapter eight. I'm gonna just read the what the seals mean, the revelation that the revelation that I got from Revelations, and um, where we are in prophecy now, and um, what we're awaiting, and what's happening. Okay, so the first seal, chapter six, verses one, it says. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four be saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The second seal, it was a red horse and he was given and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and they and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. The third seal, there was a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four be say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou heard not the oil and the wine. And with the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four be say, come and see. It was a pale horse, and the name of the rider that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth fifth seal i saw under the altar the sounds of them that were slain for the word of god and they cried with a loud voice saying how long O lord holy and true dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Sixth seal, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So you must know that there are only seven seals, right? Just in line with what's going on now, the first seal was of a white horse, and the rider was conquering and to conquer. One must believe or think or know that this in fact is the spirit of the Antichrist. And we're reading the word, it speaks about the spirit of Antichrist was already in the world. And some people just refer to a specific person. Others know that it is a spirit of Antichrist. He's also referred to as the son of perdition. So while the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, one is still waiting for the son of perdition to be revealed first horse represents the spirit of antichrist those who um are seeking to devour saints um who have turned their their ear the bible ca calls it and says that he called it a delusion on them that they believed a lie they're ushering in their god 
right? The second seal, he should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. It was a red horse. The Lord just reminded me of a vision I had, and it was of this bloody red figure, and it was clothed in these white garments. So this bloody red figure, you see how I am a brown figure and I have like on a uh, a tan or whatever color you'll call this um, hoodie, right? And the Lord uh, told me that the devil disguised himself as an angel of light. So seeing that this horse was red, it's also speaking about how he's coming. Again, understand that these seals represent the the things happening on earth right because when paul not paul i'm sorry when john was seeing all these things he said when i seen this i saw this happen on the earth so john he was caught up in the spirit in heaven but as he's seeing these seals open he's seeing things manifest on earth right so understand that these seals signify things that are happening on earth right so this also speaks towards that spirit of antichrist because we know that the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy so that's that's the spirit of antichrist the first seal the second seal is um the acts that he's carrying out now the third seal it says a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and i heard a voice in the midst of the four be say a measure of wheat for a penny a three measures of barley for a penny and see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine and that's speaking towards like uh, inflation that's going on because understand what inflation is inflation is basically robbery because now you have people who are paying three four five times the amount of something and Therefore, their money has been stolen. See, a lot of us, we think of robbery as somebody holding, you know, somebody at gunpoint or somebody being held against their will until they give up whatever it is that is being, you know, asked for. We think of it like as a ransom. But literally, government officials, um, when they raise the prices of things, what they are doing is stealing money, like right under your nose. When you have given them your power, and this is what also speaks to the antichrist and his agenda is that it speak about the 10 kings of the of the earth had gave all their power unto the antichrist and that's how he was able to rule the earth so when you have put your all of your power your resources basically you become dependent on the government they know that so they're able to raise the price of food because they know all right you gain your food from her so if i raise this price now i'm finna get you know five times the amount i would have got had you know they not raise the price and they're 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 profiting off of people's desperation right so they was speaking towards inflation now this fourth seal um it says a pale horse and his name that sat on it was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth now to me as I was reading this, that was so self-explanatory. But for those who are looking for further clarification, what that is saying is absolutely what you're seeing now. Pay attention. These are all spirits, right? So this deaf spirit um, has entered into people. Just like we speak about, I mean, just like we read about when Satan entered into Judas before he betrayed Jesus. Just like Satan is going to enter into the son of perdition when he is revealed right so this deaf spirit is entering into people who doesn't have the fear of the lord basically so this deaf spirit this kill murder spirit will enter into these people and that's where you see a lot of people being killed with the sword i.e guns and you know you see school shootings you see senseless crimes every day and with hunger you see famines they send people going hungry overseas even in your own towns food shortages as they say and with the death, see death, we can go on and talk about um, certain viruses and certain, you know, you know what I'm talking about, all of that. And with the beasts of the earth, you see it, like, I don't know if anybody's paid attention, but like how beasts are attacking humans as well. Like, like wild animals are attacking humans. Uh, that's the fourth seal. And there's only seven seals. The fourth seal has already been opened. This fifth seal, now, as I was speaking with the Lord, I was just asking, like, um, with the fifth seal, will we be aware of the fifth seal?
being open for the simple fact of this says the souls were crying out. How would one know what a soul is doing unless you are, um, say, dead, right? And all souls belong to God, right? And it says these were, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And the Bible says that, you know, when when a believer dies, they are they go to paradise with Jesus, with God the Father. So that let me know that this seal happened, this fifth seal happened, and we really wouldn't have much of like a recollect, recollection of it opening because this is um, a seal that, that represents um, souls. Like not just, obviously we are living souls, but we also have this body and we also have the spirit of God in us. But when you die, your the spirit returns to God um, the body goes to the dust which we was formed, i.e. you're buried, and your soul, it goes before the judgment seat of God, and either you pass unto life with him into paradise, or you go into hell, Hades, you know, hell, Hades, you know, whichever translation, you know, you are most familiar with. And this speak about the souls, this is speaking about people that are already dead, and only God has, you know, the ability to look upon one's soul, um, while it's outside the body. So they'll let me know that this is speaking to the, the souls that are in paradise with God right now who are waiting to be avenged, meaning um, people that have died for the word of God. And, and, and even this too, though, if we're, I believe we're in the fourth seal. I say that because when you go into the sixth seal, the sixth seal, it says that a great earthquake quake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Now we know in the word it speaks about, you know, three days of darkness you know, um, where the sun basically doesn't shine, like literally at all. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men, every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, follow us and hide us from the face of him. We could literally be in the fifth seal um, I know for sure we're, the fourth seal has been open because you can just see that in the world right now. I know for sure the fourth seal is open. I know we've already passed the first four seals, right? So with the fifth seal, this let me know that between the fifth and the sixth seal, I believe this is where the rapture takes place. Because when you go over into chapter seven, um, it speaks about that there were four angels at each on the four corners of the earth. And that even breaks down the myth of, for people who think that the earth is round, the earth is not round. The earth is not round. If anything, the earth is like, uh, it's rectangular or square-like or rectangular, either one of those, but it's flat because in order to have corners, you must have like 90 degree angles. Because a circle, you only have like, what is it called, circumference or like diameter or something. But it says the four corners. So that's that's very, you know, just like if you look at um, like this piece of paper here, right? There are four corners and you can see like they all have 90 degree angles. So therefore, if the four angels are on each end of the corner like this, right, that makes more sense right? Because it's four corners. And it said the, the angel that was coming out of the east, so somewhere in between here, the, the another angel was coming down and telling them, don't blow on the earth yet until we seal the for in the forehead uh, the people of God. And he said he heard the number of those that were sealed and it was 144,000. Glory be to God. He reminded me and put clarity on what the 144,000 is. So he put in the terms of when Jesus fed the 5,000, right? In those times, they only counted men. So where it says Jesus fed 5,000, Jesus could have easily fed 25,000 for the simple fact that 5,000 was only counting the men. It wasn't counting the women and the children. So just think about it. So if it's 5,000 men, let's just say they all married. So you got 10,000 um, you got 10,000 people and let's just say they all got children, you know, they can have between one, two, 10, however many children, and then don't even take into effect how many uh, wives they could have had. So Jesus, when it says Jesus fed 5,000, Jesus could have literally fed 
a good 25 to 30,000 people in the open field just because they didn't count the women and the children. So when they say 144,000, even if we just put it in those terms, like 144,000 men, meaning man and woman, because we know in the beginning that man is a species, female and male are the names or the um the difference the difference between the species but man is a species even though we use like man to describe like a male but man is species just like a, a bird is a uh is the name of a species but you have different type of birds man is a species and you have the male man and the female man right so with the 144,000, that could literally include male and female, but not the children. So just think about this. If there's just say, we're just going to say hypothetically, there's 1 million people on earth, right? And uh, well, no, let's, let's, let's go way more than that. Let's just say there's 1 billion people on earth, right? And let's just say 144,000 of them are raptured. That's not including children, but all children around the world are raptured too. Because if you read in the word, it speaks about that. It breaks down the 144,000 and it speaks that 12,000 were from each tribe uh, of the children of Israel. We are looked at as tribes in God's eyes. I know like the world puts you in a, tell you to check a box if you're a white or Caucasian, black or African-American, Hawaiian, Pacific or whatever. But God look at us in terms of the tribes of the children of Israel. Our real identity is as as God says, the 144,000, it could literally mean 144,000 men, um, not counting wives. But at that point, 144,000 is just literally just the servants of God, God's servants, because it says the mark of God's servants. So that's male or female, because in Acts, it says that God, he will pour his spirit on male, on his male and female servants alike. So therefore, that let me know that the 144,000 includes male and female, but it doesn't include children. So 144,000. And you know how many children it is in the world because a family of like a, a wife and a husband, right? Let's say they both get raptured and the the record say two people were raptured, but they got 10 kids. So the record really is mean and 12 people got raptured. So if you really follow what I'm saying, so imagine that 144,000 people and just imagine if they have kids and not even just them having kids, but all the kids in the world, even of the non-believer, all the kids. That's what the rapture going to look like. So that let me know. It's going to be less people raptured than people think. I think we believe that the rapture, glory be to God. I think we believe that the rapture is going to be a lot of people. But even Jesus said that narrow is the way to life. Um, broad is the gate to, you know, basically someone perishing. He said very few people find the way to life. So initially, um, it's going to be way less people that are actually raptured. But good news, though. Uh, even more great news and it just shows how gracious God really is. In Revelation 7, 14 or starting at 13, it says, and one of the elders answered saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. So even though people will be left behind from the rapture, there are still going to be people that, um, <sighs> that um, get saved um, in the great tribulation because for a lot of people, their eyes are going to be open once the rapture take place because for some people, it's like they know about it, but they don't really believe it. So when the rapture happens, this is going to open their eyes to believe it and it's going to make, it's going to put a, um, a fire in them to literally want to die for the cause. Like how the Bible speaks that they, they're, they're going to become martyrs because it's like, for some people, glory be to God, for some people, um, they have to see it to believe it. The Bible says that blessed are they who have not seen and yet they believe. But for some people, there are there are people that has to see it to believe it. So when they see this rapture take place, their eyes are going to immediately be open. And they're, they're basically going to become martyrs for their faith. And they're going to um, believe on them. And they will be a part of the ones who are dressed in robes that came out of the great tribulation. Because we're going through tribulation now. But there's going to be a great tribulation none like the world has ever seen. Which is great news because um, people will still be saved. Most will become martyrs, though. Most will um, die for their faith. Um, so literally, um, um, write their name in blood for the for the for the for the Lord. Back to the seals. 
we could easily be in in between five and six right now we could literally be um waiting five could literally be opening right now and the rapture happen and then the sixth seal because the sixth seal it speaks about a great earthquake and the the sun became black right and it goes down to say and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him and we read in the word where it speaks about that they will seek death and will not be able to um obtain it like a lot of people in this time they'll be wanting to die but they ain't gonna be able to die because they, they're going to have to go through um I, I, it gave a time stamp on how long they're going to be going through um uh, this great tribulation like they're going to want to die and nobody's going to be able to die for like such and such amount of time so um that that let me that's also like a um a sign to me as well that between the fifth and sixth seal somewhere in between are the the rapture takes place because when the seventh seal is open it went quiet and then you read closer and it speaks about basically the wrath of god being poured out there's only seven we we're definitely past four going into five five could literally be open honestly i can just to just this is just me okay but honestly i believe like the fifth seal um when it opens we won't know and it's and it's kind of dope to think of it like that or to uh for me to understand it that way because it it, it it aligns with what the word it aligns with what the word says about that god jesus coming as a thief in the night no man knows the time of the hour. So that's why it, it, it's so beautiful how everything is really aligning. We won't know when the fifth seal open, just like we don't know when Jesus is coming. So when this fifth seal open, that's basically the rapture. I'm going to put that in stone because um, a lot of people say, oh, well, we won't be here for the great tribulation. I, I'm one that believe that as well. Like God's servants, who are his servants right now in the tribulation, won't be here. And then they're going to be servants of his in the great tribulation. And these will be they that wash their robes um, in, in the blood of the lamb, um, as it states in, in Revelation 7, 14. And then when the seventh seal opens, that's when basically the wrath of God is poured out. That just made me think about something. Because the wrath of God will be poured out unto those who have blasphemed the Holy Spirit and who have literally um, basically just, uh, what is it called, turned their backs on God and they're doomed, damned to hell. So it's kind of letting me know that now don't, 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 don't say, oh, I'm going to take your word as law, but from what my understanding is this, if these people who are going to be saved in the great tribulation, and then when the seventh seal opens, there's going to be, oh, okay. So yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, so Pete. That's what it is, right? Right after the fifth seal is open and the rapture take place, um, it's going to be some sort of a time period where um, there's going to be like the 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 seven years of peace. Of this is dope. This is really dope. This is really dope. Um, the angels they're going to be blowing trumpets, and when they blow these trumpets, things are going to happen just like it happened with like the the seals, right? And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Four angels blow their trumpets. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. Yeah, so when the angels blow them trumpets, that's when that's what's gonna signify the wrath of God. Um, just like when he opened the the seals and how it signified things moving on the earth. Um it said third. The second angel sounded and a great mountain burning with fire was cast to the sea. That to me, that sounds like a volcano. And we see what's been happening with volcanoes. And the third part of the sea became blood. Yep. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life, they died. So food again. It's basically it's it's so it's so crazy though, because it's it's as if like it's getting amplified. Because right now, you see, we're going through like you know, famines or shortages or whatever the case may be, right? But then in the Great Tribulation, it's going to turn it up a notch. And then 
after that, then it's gonna turn up a notch again because they speak about how the 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 the, the creatures in the sea die. You know, a lot of people like they eat fish and stuff, and like so they let me know like food and stuff again is gonna be even more scarce than it is now, right? Um, and the third part of the waters became wormwood, and men died of the waters because they were made bitter. You see, people around the country even today like they they don't have clean drinking water, but just imagine it being amplified this much. I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, whoa, whoa, whoa to the inhabitants of the earth. By reason of the other voice of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. That's the worst part of the world to be in when, when the world comes to this, honestly. If you are an enemy of God, like you're not an enemy of me. Like if you don't like what I get on here and say, um, you you don't got a problem with me because I get on to say what does saith the Lord. When I get on, I speak with the heart of God. I don't come on to try to speak for my own um, gain or anything. Cause I mean, I can't gain nothing out of this life. I mean, there's nothing in this life for me to gain. Like a person can accomplish some stuff, but that's still that's nothing because my my reward is in heaven regardless of what I accomplish here on earth. And I don't want to sound like this, but I want to sound exactly like this. It's basically like I'm passing time by doing certain things like becoming, you know, like a doctor or becoming an entrepreneur. Like, it's like, I'm just passing time here. Like while I'm here, I'm making the most of my time, the best of my time here. But ultimately I understand that even all of those accomplishments, that don't mean nothing. Like, because my reward is in heaven. I'm looking forward to going home, like home, home. You feel me? So. Oh, glory be to God. But the Lord wanted me to get on and share um, any confusion. There is a rapture that takes place. And the takeaway is that most it, a lot of people ain't going to be caught up. A lot of people won't be caught up. A lot of people won't be caught up. A lot of people won't be caught up. And honestly, I can say, well, you better make sure you get caught up. But honestly, like the Bible says, that they already have like the seals made. So there's, there's already a... a uh, a people that is already set apart for these seals to go on their forehead so it's like i i can tell you to you know see god why he may be found and everything but ultimately god got the last say so you know um because even though it can look like a person is seeking god or they can look like they're you know a be one that's caught up in a rapture only god truly know you know but what i will tell you is that if you on the wrong side, listen, there's, it ain't nothing but terror ahead of you. And I'm just a messenger.